we in chapter 9, the sensory system. The sensory system's job is to pick up the outside physical stimulus, start from here, and use the receptors, your five senses, to transfer those physical stimulus into the language your brain, your spinal cord is speaking. So they will transfer the physical stimulus into the action potential and neurotransmitter release and send them to your control center, which is your brain and spinal cord. So this part is the sensory system's job. And in previous chapters, we talk about this part, your central nervous system, and how they control the outside through the motor neuron, control your skeletal muscle and endocrine gland, and to trigger the response. So we're gonna uh, put the last piece of the puzzle into the whole nervous system. So this part is the sensory system. In a neuroscientist, they study the brain, they like to say this. Uh, they say the, the world you think you know pretty well uh, is just an illusion your brain created for you. Because your five senses, they pick up the outside world. Okay, you think you know the outside world. And these physical stimulus, they never physically touch the brain. They, they, they've been picked up by your five senses. And their job is to transfer the, the light, the sound, the chemical smells into the action potential and send to the brain. So all your brain have is action potential. So your brain never see the light. It is very dark inside your cranial cavity. So your brain use the action potential to recreate the light and use the action potential from the ear to recreate the sound. So it's everything is, is recreated by your brain. So it sounds creepy, right? Uh, you, you never physically touch the outside world. And an application is this pretty famous movie. It's, it was pretty famous about 20 years ago when Keanu Reeves was still young and handsome. Uh, the Matrix. So if you watch the movie, uh, they will show you everything is created by by the illusion. Uh, they, they never physically live. They live in a world created by the big computer called the Matrix. And why they are able to do that? Uh, I think the idea is pretty good. The idea is because, well, everything is based on the neuronal activity. In previous chapter, we spent a lot of time talking about how this happens. And we can skip all the outside physical stimulus by directly stimulating this and trigger the illusion because everything is created by your brain. So if we can mimic, mimic the neuronal activity, we can directly activate this and to trigger exactly the same outside physical stimulus. So that's, that's, that's what I think the, the, the very unique idea in this movie Matrix. And that's the application of our sensory system. So our sensory system, we, we have the receptor. So this receptor, their job is to pick up the outside physical stimulus and transfer them into the language your brain is speaking, which is the action potential. So we have the simple one, we have the complicated one, your five senses, uh, the other four, we call them spatial senses. They are the spatial sense receptor. They are very complicated, like the rods and cones on your retina, they are very complicated. But we also have the very simple one, like your free nerve ending. Uh, that's, that's the one on your skin, detect pain sensation. It's very simple. It's very simple. They have no specialized structure. So they have a simple one, they have a complicated one. And each receptor have their receptive field. The receptive field pick up the stimulus. So it's like this is your uh, responsible for field. And if the signal come to this field, you are responsible for picking up the signal and transfer them into the neuronal activity. If they go, go outside of the receptive field, well, it's not my job, it's the other receptor's job. So each one have the receptive field. And all the sensory system can, can be adapt. Some adapt quicker, others adapt slower. A uh, good example, olfactory, your smell. Your smell affect, uh, adapt very, very quickly. You go to a room, you smell something funny, and take about 30 seconds, it's gone. And it's gone, it's not because of there is no physical stimulus. The smell is still there, but you don't smell it because your receptor, your receptor adapt. They produce less and less neuronal response. And eventually, there's no neuronal response, so you don't smell. 
and all your five senses adapt. And this slide show you, okay, they have a receptor. So each neuron have their own receptor. So if you uh, have stimulus fall on this receptive field, and it's this receptor's job to pick up the signal. If they fall on this, it's this receptor's job to pick up the signal. And let's start from the general sense, your five senses. The general sense uh, is, is the sense from your body. So you have the your skin. Your skin is the biggest input of your somatosensory input. And on your skin, you have a lot of sensors pick up the signal. Can pick up the temperature, pick up the pain, pick up the movement. So your skin, when we talk about the skin, uh, I tell you the skin is not a piece of paper. It's a two meter by two meter square, and uh, it's about two kilograms. So so it's the biggest organ you have in your body. So this is a big input of your somatosensory. And you will also have the sensation from the inside the body, like internal organ. Usually they don't go to your cortex give you consciousness. The only exception, pain. The reason is your brain is too busy to deal with the other information, so they don't want to bother you with other information. And the only one uh, worse bothering you is the pain. They tell you something's wrong, so you need to take care of it. So the internal organs, the only the, is the pain reach you. And the outside, the skin can send all the sensation to your brain. And their target, we actually talk about this in the uh, central nervous system, is your somatosensory cortex, is in the post-central gyrus, in this area, in your parietal lobe. And this is where your somatosensory cortex is located. You have the whole body map. And also the map uh, is not represent the same size as your body. You have more neurons represent your face, especially your lips, and your hand, especially your fingertips. So there are more neurons uh, analyze signal from these two areas. So these are your sensitive area compared with the other body part. So they need more neurons to analyze this. Think about the pixel, uh, digital camera, the, the higher pixel, each pixel is smaller and they are, have high resolution. And that's your fingertips and finger and the lips. When we talk about the pain sensation, uh, the body sensation, one of them we did not cover in previous chapter is pain. So every time you think about the pain, there is no uh, good memory you have with it. But we need pain. The reason is if you don't have pain, you don't you don't know you need to protect yourself. And we do have people they they were born and could not feel pain. They call it congenital insensitivity of pain. It's a big word uh, to say they could not feel pain. And usually those people they got hurt and they and some of them die at a younger age. And like this is one example. She she was born with congenital insensitivity of pain. And she is adult now. When she was young, her mom had to protect her by putting you found okay gloves, cover her fingers. And the reason is she she beat her finger and because when you were two, right? You're you're teasing, so you will beat everything. And she not just bit her finger, she actually bite them till bleeding because she could not feel pain. So her mom had to put gloves and protect protect her finger. And also, well, could, her mom protect her hand, could not protect her tongue. Actually, she chewed half of her tongue off. Um, that, that's how they realized she, she had some issues and took her to the to the pediatrician and they found she has a congenital insensitivity of pain. So if you are interested, you can look at this picture, uh, this article, and tell her how her mom helped her to sense the daily uh, possible pain signal. It's very inconvenient when you could not feel pain. And uh, when we talk about the pain sensations, okay, the sensation go to your brain. So you can reduce your pain sensation by taking the placebo. Placebo is something uh, has no physical, physiological effect, but once you believe it works, and uh, it works, so I can give you some things, and you believe okay, it can it can it can uh, treat your back pain, and when you take it, it really works, even though it does not have have no effect. So that's called the placebo effect, and sometimes your attention will will uh, change 
like you your brand pay less attention to it so I to put two videos here if you're interested you can take a look and uh, the Jones he is a UFC fighter and he broke his toe during the fighting and you watch the video you found he, he totally ignored it with a broken toe uh, because his brain was focusing on the other thing like how to win the fight so uh, and eventually he found he found it and you can you can suddenly the pain sensation kick in you can feel his you can see his facial expression totally change after he found it and the pain sensation will go to usually come from the body so it will go to the spinal cord from the spinal cord go to your brain and there's a gate theory so the theory of gate theory is you can because it will go to the spinal cord then go to your brain so you can close the gate here if you close the gate here and you can block the pain the pain will never go to your brain an application is the epidural so the epidural surgery is you local anesthesia you, you close the gate here and it's very useful because you can block the pain sensation and you can still have the, the touch the pressure so it's been uh, used a lot in lower body surgery uh, that's the epidural surgery so that's the, the gate theory of the pain the neurotransmitter used in the pain sensation is called the substance P so that's the neurotransmitter in the neuron transduct pain uh, especially uh, in some animals if they are short of substance P and the study show they can they can increase their pain uh, resistance and the another molecule affect your pain sensation is called endorphin endorphin is like endomorphin so its structure is very similar to the morphine and the morphine is a molecule used to block the pain sensation and your brain can reduce endorphin when it can be released like exercise very exhausted exercise uh, like running marathon some people say running marathon is addictive because it can trigger endorphin release giving birth uh, that's another one and they can they can re induce the endorphin release can reduce the pain sensation and uh, let's talk about the phantom pain so phantom pain happens in the uh, in the 18th century they have documents uh, talk about the phantom pain and they don't treat those patients well because they thought well, okay you don't have the arm and you feel the pain from the arm so it must be ghost that's why it's called the phantom pain and they, they don't treat them well they beat them sometimes kill them until the World War II uh, when we have enough veteran and have enough data they found about 80% of them uh, have the phantom pain so they start to study and have the explanation so what caused the phantom pain is not the physical stimulus is the neuronal activity so what they found is after this person lose the arm this neuron like those arm neuron and neurons will form the connection with other neurons so they will start to form the neural connection called the neuroplasticity to connect with other neurons so when the other neurons uh, receive the input they generate electricity uh, action potential and this action potential will go to the arm part so this neuron generate action potential and their job is the the, the the arm sensation so they feel the sensation come from the arm even though they don't have the arm anymore so after World War II we start to have a good explanation of the phantom pain and they tell you that's a very good example to tell you your sensation does not come from your physical stimulus your sensation come from your neuronal activity uh, in your in your brain Okay, let's stop here.